Hey carnivores, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. Hope you all are having a gorgeous meat-fueled Gouda day. Today's video is going to be a meal plan video focused on high fat carnivore diet living, specifically inspired by my recent roundtable interview featuring Dr. Elizabeth Bright. Thank you to everyone who voted on Instagram for helping me decide this next video focusing on high fat carnivore living. Please do follow me on Instagram at Steak and Butter Gal because that's where I post all of the polls, fun ideas, and options for you guys to submit your questions for future videos and video ideas. So Dr. Bright, just to quote her, specifically said that the rough guidelines for her high fat carnivore diet way of eating that is so good for women of all ages and for hormone healing as well is one stick of butter a day at least. She puts a lot of her clients who need to do more healing on two sticks of butter a day. But for this specific video, I will start you all off with delicious meals that help implement a whole stick of butter each day. In the first half of the video, I will provide meal options that are extremely budget friendly. I wanna show you guys that carnivore diet living can be budget friendly, and I will show you guys where I buy the cheapest options. And then in the second half of the video, I'm gonna include more variety, which naturally makes the price of each day's food go up. Second half will be more catered towards my sensitive, long haul healing carnivores. Those who have a lot of autoimmune issues that they wanna heal through high fat carnivore living, those who prioritize high quality over low, low price. So it's gonna provide all of the options across the spectrum for anybody who wants to try high fat carnivore diet. Very excited to also collaborate with Thrive Market to bring you guys this video today. I'll feature my favorite things later on in the video. So let's get started. The Target failed because their butter sucked. So let's go to Walmart. Let's hope we can find better prices and better options. Walmart it is. This is all of their ground beef options. A lot of it is out of stock, but I think this one right here is a good deal. It's ground beef and chuck. So it's nice and fatty, 80% lean, 20% fat. That's really good. Walmart has a way better selection of butter and they even have Vital Farms and unsalted Kerrygold. And the prices are lower too, which is excellent. So we're just gonna go with uh, the Kerrygold, two of them, right there. Let me just do a quick Walmart haul for you guys and show you all what I got. Honestly, just three products, but three products that you can do so much with. The first thing that I got from Walmart is ground beef, of course. Ground beef is the cheapest option, and I specifically got the chuck version. So this ground beef is from the chuck cut, which means it is tender, fatty, and delicious. As you can see, it also is labeled 80-20, so that's actually ideal, according to Dr. Bright. You don't have to obsess over numbers, track and perfect it to the point where everything you eat is 80-20. It's always nice to just know that the ground beef that you're eating is already in the ideal ratio. So 80-20 ground beef and this, I have the receipt, costs $16.48 for four pounds of ground beef. Just over $4 per pound of meat. And then I got two boxes, two dozens of eggs, and these are Happy Egg brand, which I have heard so many great things about. When you can get high quality at still a very budget-friendly price, that is ideal. So we want quality over quantity. That's why I opted out of their cage-free, super cheap eggs, because at the end of the day, we still still want nutrient dense quality carnivore foods. So these happy eggs are a perfect in the middle option, $6.68 for each dozen of happy eggs. And finally, I got two of these eight ounce blocks of Kerrygold butter right here at $4.18 per block. And by the way, each block is eight ounces 
which is 227 grams. Dr. Bright recommends one stick of butter and one stick of butter is four ounces or 113 grams, which means it is exactly half of this Kerrygold block. And by the way, this is a whole rectangular block, not a stick. So that's why one stick would be half of it right down the middle. Again, $4.18 per block. And one of these blocks will last us two days. Of course, depending on how big your appetite is, how tall you are, how active you are, it is very hard for me to give you exact amounts for each meal, which is not what I'm gonna do. These are just meal ideas. So please do not copy exactly how much meat or butter or eggs I'm cooking up per meal. If you need more, cook up more. If you need a lot less, then just eat a lot less and you can save the leftovers for your next meal. I highly recommend that you guys go by appetite when it comes to the amount of food. These meals that I cook up in the video are ideas for what you guys can cook at home for your high fat carnivore living. But please do not mimic to the T the amounts of meat, the amounts of eggs and butter that I use per meal. I've also learned after four years of carnivore, cooking a surplus is always safer and so much better than cooking less than what you need. It's just gonna be a hassle because you have to go back in the kitchen and cook even more. Cooking a surplus is great because if you do have leftovers, you can eat it at the next meal or the next day and you don't have to cook more in the kitchen and waste more time. And in my opinion, carnivore leftovers taste even more flavorful and delicious. So again, when it comes to actual portions and exact amounts for how much you should be eating per meal per day, please always listen to your body, your cravings and your appetite first. For my females who have a lot to heal, who still have a cycle, your appetite and your hunger and cravings for amounts of fat will in fact change day to day. For example, me, I crave extremely high amounts of fat the days leading up to my period and all throughout my cycle. From day one of carnivore, I have always eaten extremely high fat, at least one stick of butter a day, and I credit that to why I healed so quickly, how I got my period back within just two months of carnivore. Now, if you are not craving high fat, but you still want to give this protocol a try, don't worry, I will show you meals and techniques to get in the butter without having to go through the nausea, the diarrhea, and all the issues that can come with very high fat eating. Here is a visual breakdown of how much butter we will be eating per day. And we're going to start with one stick of butter a day. This is the Kerrygold block that I showed earlier in my Walmart haul. You're just going to cut it in half right down the middle horizontally. And there you go. You can already see that standard, at least US standard stick of butter visually. This is how much we're eating in one day. And also, I do want to note that if you are completely new to high fat carnivore diet eating, I would not start off right off the bat with one stick of butter a day. Your body and digestion will not be happy from the overload of fats. So I highly recommend that you slowly work your way up to more and more fat. I would actually start off with just one sliver more per day, exactly like how I cut it. That is one sliver. Just work up per day, one sliver per day. And if that is too much, I would honestly do one extra sliver more per two to three days, whatever it takes for your body to easily transition and work up the tolerance. Now for my experienced high fat eaters, go ahead and start eating one stick of butter a day whenever you feel ready. So the first high fat meal option I'm gonna give you guys, this is the cheap version. I'm gonna boil the eggs and this gives a especially my busy carnivores, a great to-go option as well. I'm just gonna boil six eggs, but do know that you can boil up 20 eggs, 12, 15, just batch boil so many hard boiled eggs so that if you are busy and always on the go, you can always pack hard boiled eggs. And here is the ground beef. I have separated one quarter of the ground beef block and we're gonna use this much for the meal. Throw it in your pan. I'm just going to be sauteing the ground beef loose, which means I won't be shaping it into patties or any meatball sizes. It's just gonna be loose ground beef. And here's a quick trick to make the ground beef cook even quicker is to do a steam saute. So just put a tiny bit of water in the pan to get that ground beef cooking faster. I'm gonna use my grease splatter guard to 
to prevent the grease from getting everywhere in the kitchen. By the way, all of the equipment and things that I'm using in this video will be linked down below in the description box in case you want to check out what I love using. Once your pot of water is to a boil, you can add in your eggs to start hard boiling. I usually boil for a total of eight minutes. Here's the ground beef after five minutes of cooking. You can see that the water is starting to evaporate. Feel free to season however you like. Salt and pepper is great. Whatever spices and seasonings you love and what your palate enjoys, please feel free to season. Once your boiled eggs are done, you can transfer them to an ice bath, which is water with ice, cold bowl of water to prevent the eggs from cooking further and to make it extremely easy to peel. That's another pro tip. So now back to the butter slicing. If you already have a stick of butter to go, great. But I think for each meal, and we're going to aim for three meals a day to start off this high fat protocol, which is what Dr. Bright recommends, three meals a day, which means you can slice that stick of butter to three equal parts. Here's the final presentation. I have four slivers of butter, which is one third of that stick of butter already in my first meal. And please note that I purposely topped the meal with chilled solid butter. Why? Because this is so much easier for your body to digest. Anything that is solid, chilled, cold, frozen even when it comes to fats is easier for the body to digest and retain. Anything that is melted, rendered, hot and liquidy is going to go right through you. It's going to cause nausea, diarrhea, and acid reflux. So that's why throughout this video, you will see that I never cook the butter. I always top my meals with the butter or incorporate it in ways where it is still solid. Okay, moving on to meal number two with our cheap ingredients. We're going to take those hard boiled eggs that I cooked up earlier. And this is where batch cooking comes in handy because you can make multiple different meals with the same ingredients while saving time. So this is going to easily incorporate another third of that stick of butter. So now we have used up to two thirds of that stick of butter and we're going to make a fatty, delicious chilled egg salad. We're going to smash those boiled eggs first. And yes, I'm using four boiled eggs, but that does not mean that you need to eat four boiled eggs if you feel like you need six or just two follow your hunger and i'm going to add that one third of butter into the smashed eggs and mix that all up really blend it in and incorporate that solid butter as much as possible into the egg salad here's the egg salad with the full third block of butter incorporated in you can store this in a tupperware container and enjoy it throughout the week you can eat it chilled you can eat it room temperature slightly warm Again, I would not eat this hot because all that butter and fat in this salad will melt and cause nausea, diarrhea, and all those issues. Now to pair with the egg salad, I'm going to make some ground beef burgers. Standard, super popular meal for a lot of us carnivores. I have split that ground beef block to another quarter, and I'm gonna take that quarter of meat, mash it into burger patties and start cooking. This is a good time to, again, season how you love salt and pepper, whatever seasonings, spices you love, you can add it to the ground beef, cover that pan so the grease does not get everywhere. And I'm going to cook each side for about three to four minutes on medium high heat. After three to four minutes, flip those burgers and cook for another three to four minutes. And this right here is that dangerous, dangerous rendered hot melted fat. So as you can see, when fat is melted and warmed up, it becomes this liquidy hot oil. I would avoid this at all costs, especially if you are new to high fat eating, if you are new to carnivore diet in general, because this ingredient right here, hot melted fat, will give you so many issues like nausea, heartburn, acid reflux, diarrhea, bad digestion, bloat, gas, the list goes on and on. But don't throw it away because you can save it, put it in a glass jar or a glass cup and use it as your go-to cooking oil. All right, we are at our final third of that stick of butter and I'm gonna show you how to incorporate it easily. Again, I'm slicing it into slivers while it is still solid. It's kind of melted now, so I don't really recommend using it at this state. I was just batch cooking so much and forgot to keep the butter in the fridge, but I recommend eating the butter fresh out of the fridge for maximum good digestion. So 
I have sliced the butter into little slivers. I'm going to plate my burger patties that I just cooked up. I cooked a total of five burger patties. Do you have to eat five burger patties? No, you should be eating as much as you need to feel satiated and truly full. Five burger patties, and I'm going to start topping those slivers on each of the burger patties. I actually even recommend eating your burger patties at room temperature and not piping hot because that 80 20 ground beef is going to have a lot of fat in it and again any type of fat is easier to digest when it's cooled down at room temperature and not piping hot and melted so here's how i would eat this meal for the best digestion and absorption i would top that chilled egg salad with that chunk of butter already incorporated in it and then top it off with a sliver of cold sliced butter and this right here is going to give you smooth digestion you're going to easily and enjoyably eat this meal with no issues no nausea and no heartburn so again if you are completely new to this high fat lifestyle i really would ease my way into it with the amount of butter i would cut down the amount of slivers that you top on your burgers i would really minimize the block of butter that you incorporate into your egg salad it's going to take some tweak and troubleshooting to understand what your body can tolerate right now. Before I get started with the second half of this video where I cook for you guys high fat carnivore meals that are higher in quality and better for my sensitive carnivores, I wanted to showcase my Thrive Market box. A lot of the products that I'm gonna share are going to be used in the recipes later on. The first one being this Thrive Market Ghee, perfect for my sensitive carnivores who cannot tolerate the trace amounts of lactose in butter. So if that is you, ghee could be your alternative because it is clarified butter there is no more lactose in this jar of ghee and it is high fat flavorful and perfect for high fat carnivore meals i actually think the flavor in ghee is even better than butter better than butter <laughs> and on top of that ghee can cook at much higher temperatures so ghee is definitely a better alternative as a cooking oil to butter and then i restocked my favorite parchment paper this brand is just the most popular brand i always see this at whole foods as well but of course thrive market has the lowest prices so i always buy from thrive market this is what the parchment paper looks like and the brand is called if you care so a little bit more about thrive market it basically is a membership based grocery store so anything that you need for home supplies cleaning supplies groceries you can get it at thrive market and you always can find the lowest prices. You can even filter certain dietary needs. For us as carnivores, the keto filter is perfect because you can filter out all of the vegan crap, all of the carby, sugary crap that we will never need to eat ever again, and just find out what is keto friendly. I know that some of the keto filtered products will still not be carnivore friendly, but it is one step forward towards carnivore friendly foods. When you do turn on that keto, filter you can see that a lot of the foods and products that show up are in fact carnivore friendly like this product that i get every single time i order from thrive it is basically their thrive market brand grass-fed beef sticks and these are in the original flavor they are literally just grass-fed beef 
no soy, no preservatives, no antibiotics or hormones, of course, zero gluten, and just spiced so that it's nice and flavorful. Now for my high fat carnivores, when you're eating so much fat and your plates are always filled with grease, you need an effective dish soap that can cut through all that grease and fat and that can clean off that slippery, greasy residue off of your plates. So you can see I almost used half of the bottle already, but I just wanted to feature this specifically because Rosie is Thrive Market's exclusive line of household cleaning supplies. Clean ingredients, eco-friendly and hypoallergenic. So this is a great dish soap. And that's all the products. If you guys are interested in shopping at Thrive Market as well, you guys can go to the URL on the screen, thrivemarket.com slash steakandbuttergal to get a free $60 gift with your first order. I have also linked the URL down below in the description box if you want a clickable link. Now we move on to high fat meals that are higher in quality and better for my sensitive healers. This is pasteurized bone in short ribs. I am going with this one as opposed to my favorite flanken flat thin cut ones because these are way fattier and these will also be extremely, extremely supportive to the one stick of butter a day, but without the need for butter because there is so much fat in these beef short ribs. We can just have this as a standalone meal and it's going to be enough fat for the day. So I'm going to be cooking these in the oven. I have lined a baking sheet with parchment paper, the same exact parchment paper I showed earlier, and I'm going to lay these beef short ribs across the parchment paper and put it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I will be cooking for a total of 50 minutes. And as a nice refreshing side to this beef short rib meal, I'm going to be making my famous egg pudding. This is actually my mom's recipe. I've made this many, many times on my channel before, but this is just for my new viewers who are not familiar with the egg pudding. We're going to be needing eggs, some water, or honestly, any liquid that you like. You can use bone broth, you can use milk. I'll just be using water for this egg pudding. You're going to need to get a pot of water to a boil while we prep the egg egg pudding mix. The egg pudding, I'll be using four eggs, but please know you can use as many or as little eggs as you want. Four eggs is just what I will be choosing for this egg pudding side. And I'm using the happy eggs from Walmart. Any eggs will do. You can even do duck eggs, goose eggs, whatever eggs you want. And for the egg to liquid ratio, this is very important. It is just one to one ratio. So however many eggs you used, I would actually crack the eggs into some type of measuring cup or even just a glass cup to see how much is in that cup and just match that same amount in your liquid of choice. So I'm matching it with water today, four eggs to the exact same amount in water into the egg pudding bowl. Then mix everything up really well. The more beat up this egg mixture is, the smoother your egg pudding texture will be. Once your water is to a rolling boil, you can turn down the heat. Carefully place your egg pudding bowl into the pot and make sure that it fits perfectly in there where you can still close the lid completely. And this is where I'm going to put a big old chunk of butter because we're doing the high fat way of eating. And also this is when I was about to have my uh, period. So I was definitely craving for more fat, but if you're doing the one stick of butter a day, this is a perfect way to sneak in those fats without really being able to tell or taste it. So put in a block of butter in there. You can even put in some salt to really help with the cooking steaming process. Close the lid and steam for about seven plus minutes. You do have to kind of keep an eye on it, pat the egg pudding to check if it's a jelly pudding texture yet. But for four eggs, I usually steam for about seven minutes on low medium heat. Here's the finished product of the egg pudding after steaming for seven minutes. And as you can see, I topped it with even more butter. So technically you can actually sneak about two thirds of a stick of butter like I have here into this dish alone and enjoy every bite of the fat and the egg pudding without any issues. So this is an excellent dish for my sensitive healers. And if butter triggers you or inflames you, you can swap that butter and fat with ghee, the product that I showed earlier. I love the flavor of ghee. I often make egg pudding just like this, but with ghee. 
And here's the finished product of the beef short ribs after cooking in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 minutes total. And here is a pro tip that I highly recommend you do is to eat these ribs at room temperature. If not room temperature, completely cooled down. Otherwise, it will be very easy for your body to feel nauseated if you eat even just one bite too much or more than your body can handle. So really take the time to let these ribs cool down and then enjoy it. And here is meal number two that is high fat and delicious. Line that baking tray with your parchment paper and our ingredients for today. I will be using this Thrive Market ghee. And again, if you guys are interested in this particular ghee product, you guys can click the link down below in the description box to check it out. And some fatty party chicken wings from ButcherBox. And I chose ButcherBox because their meat is consistently very high quality. So this is great for my carnivores who are trying to heal autoimmune issues where quality does matter and it does make a difference in how quickly you heal and how you feel every day. So we're using ButcherBox for the chicken wings. ButcherBox also provides steaks, seafood, pork, bacon, sausages, chicken, of course, and it is a great meat subscription delivery service. I've linked them down below in the description box as well if you would like to check them out. For the chicken wings, we're gonna make them extra high fat and extra crispy by coating the skin with this Thrive Market ghee. So as you can see, I'm just using my hands to coat each of these chicken wings with some ghee on the skin directly. This is going to really crisp up that skin and make it extra crispy, extra juicy, and fatty. And as you can tell, this is the first time I'm incorporating the animal fats into the cooking process. And because ghee can be cooked at much higher temperatures than butter, and it won't burn, that's why I'm adding it into the chicken wings while baking in the oven. So we're gonna bake at 380 degrees for a total of 45 minutes. If you want it extra crispy, I would do 50 to 55 minutes. And another pro tip is if you want that extremely crispy skin, at the very end, you can high broil, or if you just have a broil setting, just broil for a total of two to five minutes for an extra, extra crispy skin. So here's how I enjoy this meal I had a side of some sugar-free sausages from Teton and I will link these down below in the description box as well and also a side of cold Kerrygold butter and some sparkling water. So another pro tip for my new high-fat carnivores who are just starting this way of high, high-fat eating, I recommend always having some sparkling water on hand because it really helps cut the nausea of all of this fat, especially if you're eating a lot of warm, hot, cooked, melted fats. But the beauty of these chicken wings is you get that crispiness from the skin and it's not nauseatingly fatty because they're chicken wings so they're always on the leaner side and by the way i even got steak and butter guy to snack on bars of Kerrygold. how crazy is that he saw me doing it so much lately that he wanted to try it for himself and he ended up loving it which leads me to this next high fat pro tip always snack on chilled cold or frozen butter. That is the absolute easiest way to get in those fats, especially when it is solid, chilled, and cold. Eat it right out of the wrapper or slice it into slivers and enjoy. It is also the best way to beat and fight those sugar cravings. And my final high fat meal idea for you all, especially my sensitive carnivores, is high quality steaks. My steak of choice is ribeyes just because it is very high fat and delicious, of course. I love butcher box ribeyes because it is grass fed and grass finished, perfect for my sensitive carnivores who need high quality, well sourced beef. So I have put it into my air fryer and this is the Cuisinart air fryer that I have been using for years and years, a total of almost four years now, and it still works beautifully. And this is consistently the type of steak I get straight out of the air fryer every time. And I cook at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, the air fryer's highest setting for a total of seven minutes, and I don't even have to flip. Obviously you can flip if you want to, I'm just lazy, and I like to just cook in one go. And another high fat pro tip for you all, you can cut off any type of fat cat from your high fat steaks, just cut off a piece of that fatty part and that is cooking oil ready for you to use anytime. So I just coated the grease from that fat cap 
on my pan to saute up some fried eggs and also my favorite sugar-free sausages from Teton. And finally, to enjoy this meal, I personally go for the absolute winning combination, steak and butter like my name suggests, but in this case, it's steak and ghee because I wanted that extra punch of buttery flavor from the ghee. So I think that this is probably the easiest way to add in any extra fat to all of your meals. This is very easy to reach that one stick of butter a day guideline if you just cook up your go-to carnivore meals and simply top off as much butter or ghee or animal fat of your choice to those meals. In my case, I'm letting it melt on these hot steaks because I can now tolerate as much fat as I need in any state, melted, cold, frozen, hot, rendered. I'm able to digest and absorb. But if you're new to this high fat way of eating and you can't digest and absorb melted fats, again, just enjoy it as a side, cold, chilled, or frozen. And if you guys are interested in this Thrive Market ghee, I have linked it down below in the description box. Hey carnivores, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching and watch it until the very end as well. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your bell and notifications so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Please treat the meals that I cooked for you all as meal ideas and inspiration. Please do not mimic the exact amounts per meal. And the general guideline to repeat Dr. Bright is three meals a day, one stick of butter each day at least. Our bodies are all different, so please treat these as general guidelines. But one thing is for sure, and that is high fat carnivore diet is extremely beneficial and hormonally healing for us women of all ages as well. If you want extra support from me, I run a support group called the Steak and Butter Gang. It is a carnivore community off social media that is open 24 seven. You will get my help, my coach's guidance, and live Zoom calls every single week to help you through your high fat carnivore journey. We have weekly popular themed Zoom calls. Every Friday, we have fat loss and fitness. Sundays, we have carnivore health concerns and fasting 101. Tuesdays, we have priming 101, which is very, very aligned with Dr. Bright's protocol of three meals a day, high fat. So in those weekly Tuesday meetings, you will get plenty of troubleshooting guidance and answers to how to proceed with your high fat carnivore journeys. If you're struggling with any adaptation issues like digestive issues, loose stools, low energy, insomnia, the coaches will show up to help you troubleshoot and get past those temporary hurdles. And for each month's challenge, I get to feature a unique panel of guest speakers. Every single month it is different and unique so there's always something to look forward to for the month of october i will put up the guests on the screen please note that dr elizabeth bright herself will be a guest speaker so you are able to submit your personal specific questions for each of these guest speakers for them to answer live on zoom please click the link down below or go to sbgmeetup.com to sign up to join the community and finally if you would like more of me and my carnivore content you can also find me on Instagram at Steak and Butter Gal, same exact handle. I love to post stories and polls so that you guys can vote on what's the next video I should do, the next interview guest I should bring on. I also do the same type of polls on Nunu. I've definitely gotten a lot of your help deciding on the latest videos that I've posted recently since I've been on that platform. I basically just post super polls and you guys can submit your votes on whichever decision you like better. For example, I'll post like, what should my next round table be? Female hormones or how to be carnivore in social situations. And you guys have the power to submit your votes and I film the video topic that wins. So check me out there as well if you would like to personally vote and decide on my future content videos and video interview guests. I've linked my profile in the description box as well. All right, carnivores, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all have a Gouda Gouda day. See you in the next video. SPG out.